Buonasera, eh, sono Francesca Boldri e sono conservatrice della collezione Acton, quindi sono uno storico dell'arte, questo termine conservator, curator, eh, lost in translation, comunque sono uno storico dell'arte di formazione, da tanti anni mi occupo della cura eh, della collezione. E questa conferenza fa parte di due cicli, Museum Meetings e le Acton Lectures, dedicati ai nostri studenti di NYU, ai nostri professori, ma sono sempre aperti al pubblico. Vorrei innanzitutto portare un saluto caloroso da parte della dottoressa Elin Toscano, la direttrice di New York University a Firenze, che è stata intrattenuta per lavoro a New York e con dispiacere manca la conferenza di stasera, ma che ha accolto subito e con entusiasmo la mia proposta, appena la dottoressa Iatt è stata chiamata a dirigere i Musei Vaticani da Papa Francesco il 1 gennaio 2017. Eh, il 3 gennaio ritornai a rientrare al lavoro e io andai dalla dottoressa Toscano con la proposta di questa conferenza. Ci abbiamo lavorato un po' perché gli impegni sono tanti. Eh, nel 2015 io avevo avuto un dono da un amico, eh, il libro di Papa Francesco, eh, dedicato all'arte. In realtà parla di tante cose, parla della misericordia, parla della bellezza, la, mia idea, la mia idea di arte. E lui, una, una frase mi ha colpito di questo testo. Lui dice, i musei devono accogliere nuove forme d'arte, devono spalancare le porte alle persone di tutto il mondo, essere uno strumento di dialogo tra le culture e le religioni, uno strumento di pace. Essere vivi, non polverose raccolte del passato solo per gli eletti e i sapienti, ma una realtà vitale che sappia custodire quel passato per raccontarlo agli uomini di oggi. Ecco, questa idea di museo trae origine direttamente dall'istituzione culturale greca del Mauseion, di Alessandra d'Egitto, lo sappiamo bene, voluto da Tolomeo I e dedicato alle muse, le nove figlie, ricordiamoci, della dea della memoria, Mnemosina. Mnemosine, o Mnemosine e Zeus, un luogo dinamico, già allora, dove, si erano, dove vi erano più di mille studiosi, e per l'appunto al Vaticano ci sono più di mille eh, dipendenti, un luogo dedicato già allora alla preservazione e all'incontro, un luogo di insegnamento e di ricerca, a cui era annessa una biblioteca universale, anima del Mauseion. A tale proposito, introducendo la nostra illustre ospite, eh, Barbara Iatta, mi piace ricordare nella sua biografia che la dottoressa Iatta eh, fece la sua specializzazione nella grafica, eh, che ci raccontava oggi ha lavorato come eh, restauratore di carta e, e che il suo ruolo di docente universitario di storia delle tecniche e delle arti grafiche l'ha portata a trasmettere agli studenti eh, in Italia ma anche all'estero eh, l'interesse per la stampa e per la grafica, che forse era più sviluppata negli Stati Uniti ehm, negli anni 80-90 ma che ora eh, sappiamo bene sta avendo eh, un grande interesse anche, eh, anche in Italia già da, già da un ventennio. Suo impegno assiduo da, già dal 1996 di curatrice e direttrice del gabinetto disegno e stampe della biblioteca apostolica. Passo ora all'inglese, la lingua della nostra conferenza. Quindi, good evening, uh, my name is Francesca Boldri, I'm the collection manager for the Acton Collection at Villa La Pietra. This lecture is included in the museum meetings and in the Acton lecture series. I would like to bring them my warmest greetings from Ellen Toscano, executive director for New York University, Florence. Ellen is in New York on university business and she really regrets missing tonight's events. When Dr. Yatta was appointed director of the Vatican's museums by Pope Francis on January 1st, 2017, I talked to Ellen about having Dr. Giatta La Pietra. This was January 3rd. And she enthusiastically and warmly immediately welcomed my proposal. It took some time, nearly one year, but tonight we have Dr. Yatta with us. Um, I started to think about an, uh, inviting um, Dr. Yatta because that kind of idea that she was the first woman directing the Vatican's museums uh, kind of came in me. But there was another reason. I actually had admired uh, Pope Francis' um, quote, letter, uh, actually text, in one of his books, the book that he dedicated to, to art. This book is called My Idea of Art. It was published by Mondadori and the Edizioni Music, uh, Musei Vaticani. And what, it was, um, what, what, what I was struck by are his words, museums, must accept new forms of art. They have to be open doors to people all over the world, being an instrument of dialogue between cultures and religions, an instrument of peace, be alive, 
not just the collections of the past, only for the elect and the wise, but a vital reality that knows how to keep that past to tell it to the people of today. This idea of museums, of a museum, originates directly from the cultural institution of the Moiseion of Alexandria of Egypt, wanted by Ptolemy I. The Moiseion, dedicated to the Muses, the nine daughters of Nemosine, goddess of memory and Zeus, was a very dynamic place for preservation, intercultural meeting, teaching and research, with over a thousand people working, researching. There was also there a rich library, the soul of the museum. In this regard, I'd like to mention the biography of Dr. Jatta, her many steps, her specialization in the history of prints, her being herself a, restore, a conservator uh, of prints and drawings, and her role as a university professor in those subjects. Since 1996, she's been the director and curator of the cabinet of prints at the Vatican Apostolic Library. It is with great pleasure that now I give the floor to our speaker, Barbara Jatta. Thank you. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay. Good evening to everybody. I'm really honored to be here tonight, and thanks to Francesca Boldri to organize all of that. And I didn't know that you, uh, only two days after my appointment, you, you asked for having me here. So I'm very sorry. Of course, the duties are, are, are many, so I, but I'm very, very happy to be here tonight. Uh, as she mentioned, I am director of the Vatican Museum since January 2017. But actually, uh, from uh, uh, June 2016, so six months before, I, um, uh, I joined Antonio Paolucci as deputy director of the institution, which was very clever because uh, I had six months of uh, co-directorship uh, that helped me to to get into the institution and to, to be aware of, of the institution. Uh, before that, I had almost my whole professional life, uh, uh, at least the last 20 years, in the Vatican Apostolic Library, the Vatican Library, uh, where uh, I worked uh, uh, for, my, uh, for my background. Uh, I'm an art historian, and she mentioned I graduate in Rome University, La Sapienza, where I also had my specialization in uh, art history, but specifically on graphic art, so prints, drawings, maps, and photographs. Um, I worked mainly, mainly there from 1996, uh, so 20, exactly 20 years in the Vatican Apostolic Library, but also before that time, I worked for the National Institute of Graphic Art and in many other museums. Uh, I was mentioning before the Cleveland Museum of Art and then the Cortell Institute in London and the British Museum for different, uh, different projects during my, my training. Um, for 20 years, I was in the Vatican Library, the, which uh, I will explain later is a very different institution from, from the Vatican Museums. Uh, and I direct the Gabinetto delle Arti Grafiche, or Gabinetto delle Stampe. The nomenclature, the, the, the name of, of, uh, of this uh, department of the Vatican Library changed during my directorship there. Uh, Pope Benedictus XVI decided to, to increase this department, which is devoted to the preservation and the, and the conservation and the, and, the, and the study of, uh, of the prints, the drawings, the maps, uh, uh, adding adding the um, the entire collection of the Popol photographic collection. So more than two hundred thousand photographs that during uh, uh, from the time of Pius the Nine, see Pio Nono of Pius the Nine. So in mid uh, in mid nineteenth uh, century to the present day, mostly to, to the time of uh, the pontificate of John Paul II, the Vatican Library was the place devoted to preserve uh, the documentation, so the photographic documentation of, uh, of the Vatican City State. So before the Osservatore Romano's photographic service started to, to have this role, the Vatican Library was, was the place. So it's really, uh, for, for more than a century, the place where you, you can find images, photographic images of the Vatican City State. Um, how did I get to the Vatican Museums? 
uh, I must confess that I did not uh, think absolutely of uh, that Pope Francis would reserve this fate to me. <laughs> I, I was well in my work. I was having many, many projects to, to carry on. And uh, uh, I was coming back from the States. So the States uh, is good luck for me. Uh, from the Notre Dame in Indiana University where we had a, a major uh, conference uh, on the Vatican Library and the, the use of the Vatican Library by the American universities. And... Um, and coming back uh, in uh, in May, 16 May, I was uh, I was called by the prefect of the Vatican Library and the cardinal librarian, that uh, told me this uh, this new this new decision of Pope Francis. Uh, of course, I'm very different uh, from Antonio Palucci that you probably all know. In terms of, uh, of person, I'm a woman, and uh, Francesca Baldry mentioned this fact that I'm the first woman. I, I didn't really realize that just uh, everybody and, and the media gave, gave a lot of effort in, in, this, in this aspect of my directorship. In fact, I, I realized that very recently because many women are, are coming to me and and I'm very happy about my, my position. I hope that uh, Pope Francis and, uh, and the high charges in, uh, in the Governatorato della Città del Vaticano uh, choose my person for my background, for my being there. In a way, I'm an external choice because I was not working in the Vatican Museum, but I'm an internal choice because I, I, I was very aware of how the dynamics of the Vatican City states are, are going and the, all the different institutions of, uh, of uh, this tiny, the tiniest city, uh, uh, Vatican and uh, uh, state uh, mm, of the world. Um, when I arrived in the museums, I knew most of, uh, of, the, of the people there because I had, uh, I had uh, work for the several projects, Antonio Paolucci, was very happy and he was a wonderful a wonderful director for the six months we were together and he was joking to me because uh, his directorship uh, his contract was ending on the 4th of, uh, of, uh, of December and the 4th of December is Saint Barbara and so he was saying that's a sign of, uh, of, of the of God so you, uh, you will have um, your my place on, on the day th uh, of your saint in fact uh, this didn't happen but in fact he left on the 4th of, of, uh, of December and that was appointed from the 1st of January, but it's, a, it's more or less the same. Uh, as, a, as Francesca Boldry mentioned, I had trained, has um, restored during my, my, my youth, and um, paper restorer. And uh, at that time, I had a, a tiny contract in the Vatican Museum, and it was, it was a it was 1980s when uh, uh, Gianluigi Colaluce and Fabrizio Mancinelli were restoring the, the fresco ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And so I really was uh, trained up and, and I grew up in, uh, in uh, visiting the scaffolding of, uh, of the Sistine restoration. And, uh, and I had the opportunity to know, to know uh, the museums, which nowadays are very, very different from, uh, from that time. Uh, 30 years passed. Uh, and uh, the Vatican museums are, I must say, a different institution. So, but in, in another way, I, my being there 30 years before helped me to be, uh, at least to know, to know the spaces and to know many, many uh, of the young people uh, uh, of that time now are people in, in an older age like I am, but uh, uh, even if I consider, I still consider myself a young woman, but. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I'm, um, I'm uh, not a really young director, I must say, because uh, there are many other directors in, uh, in, um, in, uh, of major, major museums that are younger than me. Uh, what are the Vatican museums? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I must go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, First of all, they are the museums of the Pope. This is important to remember. Uh, museums that popes from the past and, museum and popes and the current Pope Francis have built and carried out uh, over the century to them make them available to, to not only to pilgrims, 
but to all visitors of every belief, typology, ethnic, and nations. Another important thing to, to, to remember is that uh, the Vatican Museums are uh, the, the civic museum of the Vatican City State. So they, they are uh, uh, a director, uh, directorate general of uh, the governorate of the Vatican City State. Uh, the, um, there are five directorship, director, major directorship in the, in the governorate. Uh, and uh, this, uh, of course, the museums is the major and the most important and the most large uh, directorate uh, general, uh, but uh, is one of the five. The other one is the economical, the other one is the sanitary, the other one is, uh, is, um, is the Ville Pontificia. So it's, there are five directors that depend all to a uh, cardinal, that is the cardinal president of the Vatican City State, who's currently. Uh, uh, an Italian, uh, Cardinal Giuseppe Bertello, from, uh, from, um, he comes from uh, diplomacy and is from, uh, from um, Piemonte. But before 1929, so when the Vatican City State was established, uh, the museum depended directly from uh, the um, priest of the sacred palaces. So it was depending directly by the Pope. That's why, of course, they are the museums of the Pope. We, now it depends from the civic uh, administration, but before that, it was uh, really a direct, uh, direct uh, influence uh, of, uh, of, the, of the Curia and of the Pope uh, administration. Of course, the Vatican Museum are extraordinarily rich, uh, uh, and they are named in plural. We name Vatican museums uh, in plural term uh, because they are um, really a complex of so different collection that goes from um, uh, we will see now now some some images uh, from uh, Egyptian to Etruscan to Greek and Roman to the great frescoes and 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 so on and um, that were put together by pontiffs by cardinals and by directors of, of uh, these institutions um, that uh, in a way from 1506 uh, were, were able to, to increase these collections. We generally uh, use uh, the, uh, the 1506 and, and the figure of Pope Julius II to be uh, the start of uh, this incredible collection. Julius II uh, de la Rovere, he was a nephew, he was a Franciscan nephew of another Franciscan Pope, uh, Sistus IV, uh, always de la Rovere, that he was a uh, um, very important for many reasons, but the, probably the most one and uh, for uh, a milieu of art historians is the fact that he was the one who, who built the Sistine Chapel and wanted the, wanted the Quattrocentisti to go there and fresco the, the, the lower part of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, when uh, Julius II arrived to be, uh, um, was elected Pope, uh, he, he was a, an incredible Pope in many sense. Uh, fascinating and really prolific under, in terms of collecting and commissioning. Suffice it to say that he was, uh, during his pontificate, he was only 10 years from 1503 to 1513, uh, he managed to commission to Donato Bamante um, the new Basilica of St. Peter's. These are two drawings uh, at the Uffizi of, of it, of the project by Bramante, but also the incredible staircase system and, and construction of the Belvedere Vaticano. But also he commissioned to Michelangelo the Sistine Chapel ceiling. So, and not only uh, uh, the, the Sistine Chapel ceiling, but also his tomb in San Pietro Montorio that you all know that finally was, was reduced as a project. But, and then to Raphael, his private apartment. He didn't want to live in, in the Borgia apartment of uh, his predecessor, Alessandro Sesto Borgia, so he decided to have the best, uh, after a Michelangelo painter, to, the, to, to decorate and to paint his, his private uh, uh, room. So, so the so-called Raffaele, Stanze di Raffaello in Vaticano. But um, he was also the the pontiff who managed to create the first collection of nucleus of the Vatican Museums, which is a, an extraordinary collection of Greek and Roman statues gathered in the Belvedere 
in uh, statues were, since the discovery of the Lacoonte in 1506, uh, were considered really the first nucleus of, uh, of the collection of the Vatican Museums. He decided, it, uh, Julius II decided to took, a, to took this personal collection of, of statues inside uh, a little garden, a sort of artus conclusus, uh, where um, the statues of, of this collection it could take place, so um, the Lacon, but uh, also the Torso del Belvedere, and then uh, going on, uh, the, um, the, this is the courtyard, the uh, uh, octagonal that then in later on was, uh, was uh, but the Lacon, of course, uh, the Torso, but then the Apollo also was part of the collection. And, um, and then the Adiana and many, many other, and the Nilus and, and many other statues were, were part of, of his private collection. Of course, uh, um, we, we tend to consider 1506 as uh, the beginning of, uh, of the Vatican Museums, but, uh, but in terms of museums, uh, as uh, Francesca Boldi was mentioning uh, uh, in uh, the Alessandria, um, idea of museum, so a place, not a private collection, a place where people can go, we have to wait 18th century, we have to wait uh, the Vatican Library uh, um, collection and museums, the, the sacred and the profane museum put up together by Benedictus the XIV uh, in the Vatican, uh, Clemens the uh, twelfth established the first uh, public uh, Museum in the Cap in, in Campidoglio uh, a, f a couple of decades before, but in uh, in um, 1757 and 1761, the profane and uh, and the um, and the Christian museum were established, and so they were really the first nucleus inside the Vatican Library collections, which of course was devoted to the preservation of manuscripts, of printed books, of uh, coins and medals, but also of prints, drawings, and and all what is related to the knowledge uh, in a humanistic s wide sense of the meaning, uh, in a humanistic wide sense of the meaning, also in an 18th century time was important to have museums uh, in, in as a department of, uh, of, of the Vatican Library. So what is really important, and not really uh, everybody is aware that the first nucleus of the Vatican Museum were born inside the Vatican Library's collections. Um, uh, these are few few examples uh, of uh, of uh, and images. These are beautiful spaces of the Vatican uh, Vatican museums uh, uh, collection that then passed uh, um, in 1999 until 1999. So I was still working in the Vatican Library. Uh, Pope uh, John Paul II decided for the Grand Jubilee of the 2002 to pass those museum uh, in, uh, in the jurisdiction, in the administration of the Vatican Museums because it was more easy in terms of uh, gardening but also of preservation and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and keeping. Uh, these are other part. These are the papyrus uh, room of the, that are nowadays part of the Vatican, uh, Vatican Museums, not, not anymore to the Vatican Library jurisdiction. This is a Manx. Um, by the same years uh, of archaeological favor and excavation, the epigraphic collection was established. The stone library commissioned by, of course, a custode, a prefect of the Vatican Library, Gaetano Marini, at the end of 18th century, inside the palace walls. So this is uh, the, um, uh, a large corridor that links the Vatican Museums, the Vatican Library, to the Popal Palace. And, um, and it was a current vestibulus to the Vatican Library, but then also to the collection of, uh, of antiquity of the Vatican Museums. Uh, and it's a sum of very, very important epigraphical findings, fruits of excavation and campaigns of the 18th century, distributed in 48 thematic panels. Each panel is devoted to, to um, a, different, uh, a different theme. Uh, with a with a 18th century kind of arrangement, but uh, it's a very very interesting and important uh, collection that put together uh, 3,614 uh, uh, epigraphs, uh, stones, page of stones, uh, of stone. 
the Vatican Library played a very important role, but also, of course, the Vatican Museum in, in were enriched by all what uh, was there in terms of, uh, of stable uh, frescoes. Uh, the Raphael rooms, of course, uh, uh, were visited, and the, the Raphael lodges, uh, but specifically the Raphael's rooms and Raphael lodge and antiquities, more than the Sistine Chapel, were for centuries the place uh, that visitors wanted to see, wanted to 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 visit more more than the Sistine Chapel. I must say that only really, of course, uh, in in um, uh, even in uh, in uh, 18th century, 19th century, and 20th century, uh, the the Sistine Chapel was uh, was uh, was uh, one of the places. But he, he really became uh, the universal place that it is uh, only after the major restoration of his ceiling and, and of the entire chapel because the real uh, colors and the real Michelangelo was out. Uh, really, we, 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 must, uh, we must see a, a big change in, in, the, in the interest of, uh, of the visitors to, to it. But then, uh, of course, this is, uh, of course, Michelangelo and, and Perugino and other quattrocentisti, Botticelli and others, uh, of course, where where the place? Uh, I have few images. I pass very, very fast. Uh, this because uh, the other important um, museum is the Museum Pio Clementino, the great and the extraordinary uh, place uh, where the major excavations of uh, of uh, 18th century were put together. Uh, these are some, or oh, this is the, the Galleria Bustia Statue of the Mio Museo Pio Clementino. This is the same with the Arianna, Arianna sculpture. And then we have the Braccio Nuovo, or the Museo Chiaramonti. <coughs> the Pio Clementino was put together by Clemens XIV uh, Ganganelli and Pius VI Braschi between, uh, between mid-18th uh, mid uh, century to the end uh, of uh, of uh, 18th century, Pius VI Braschi was uh, was took by Napoleon troops and and he died in exile. So it was really, really uh, uh, a, a, an incredible pontificate, but also a very dramatic one. Uh, the um, Galleria Chiaramonti was established just to in in a place uh, uh, by by um, uh, by the next Pope uh, Pius VII to in a way be re, re, uh, um, to reestablish in, in the Vatican Museum what Napoleon took after the Trattato di Tolentino in, 19, in 1797 uh, to Paris to establish the major, the major Museo Universel uh, wanted by Napoleon with all the, uh, um, the uh, war exportation of uh, not only of uh, of uh, antiquities but also with the major Renaissance and Baroque uh, paintings and and uh, and uh, coins and medals from the uh, Vatican uh, Library, but also manuscripts are very very important and not only from the Vatican and Rome and and the Pontiff uh, territories, but to entire Italy and enti entire Europe, and um, only. Uh, when after the Congress of Vienna, and uh, only when uh, uh, always uh, Pius VII was still uh, uh, was still in charge, uh, he, um, and the defeat of Napoleon, they decided uh, with, together with Canova, which was superintendent alle belle arti, in a way director of the Vatican Museums, together with the architect Raphael Stern, they decided to build the new wing, uh, il braccio nuovo della Galleria Caramonti, where all the major important uh, sculpture uh, taken by Napoleon were, um, were brought back by, by Canova. That was for several months in Paris, uh, held by two guards, because uh, of course Parisian people and French people didn't want to, to give back uh, uh, after 20 years uh, the, these major works. But um, of course, uh, most of, uh, of, uh, of the art object came back, the Lacon, the Torso, and uh, the Apollo, and uh, the, um, uh, the Nilus, not the Tiber that is still in the Louvre, uh, the Augusto di Prima Porta, that's the Nilus, 
the Gusto di Prima Porta, the Atena Giustiniana, and, and many, many years, others came back together with, uh, uh, with Canova. And the idea of the restoration of the power of the popes uh, and the restoration of the antique, uh, so the uh, the ancient in in uh, in a wide in a wide sense uh, that the ancient the Roman ancient was in a way the uh, the uh, representation in a way of uh, uh, of the the, the same um, I, I wouldn't say power but the the magniloquence and the importance of the papacy. Um, uh, of course, uh, uh, together Canova together with the with the great, uh, the great uh, sculptures brought back a wonderful and a very, very important uh, uh, piece of art from um, Renaissance and Baroque time that were not part of the Vatican collection before. The most important example is, uh, is the Madonna di Foligno that was in, uh, of course, was conceived for, for, for a church in Rome, but then was moved in, uh, in Foligno, in a convent in Foligno, taken by the troops by Napoleon, brought to Paris, and when, when they got back, uh, they came back to the Vatican Pinacoteca. Uh, not the present one, which was made later, but was part of the collection of the Vatican. And the same is for the very, very important Trasfigurazione by, by Raphael, because uh, uh, that was in San Pietro in Montorio, a church of Rome, and when he got back, he, he arrived to the Vatican. And Another is to say, even the Caravaggio, which was in the Chiesa della Vallicella, and then after, after uh, the coming back from, from Paris was brought in the Vatican. So one of the uh, three of the major of our pieces were not part of the Vatican collection, of course, in, in, uh, unless in, you, you were considered the white sense, uh, the church, of course, Rome was, was popal, uh, and, and, the, and the territory of, of the Pope were, were popal, but were not inside a Vatican Museum. So the concept uh, that, uh, that Na Napoleon uh, uh, Museo Universel brought uh, is the idea that he had to be uh, a museum open to the public, at least to the public fruition, so that people can, can see, and not only very, very few, uh, few people. We had to wait uh, uh, more than um, two centuries to have uh, a ticket no, uh, a century and, uh, and 30 years, uh, a century and a half uh, in 1929, to have a ticket and so everybody can enter. But uh, the idea already was established. Uh, what are the Vatican Museum today? Uh, they are, the 19th century had, uh, Gregorius XVI also had an um, uh, Egyptian museum with the excavation and the, and the, the and um, so we have uh, nine rooms, uh, very, very important, in, uh, uh, that were from, uh, from uh, this pope put in the Palazzetto di Innocenzo VIII in the Belvedere. So he, he, they are in a wonderful position. And also in, 19, uh, in, 18, uh, uh, in 1839, uh, also the, the, um, the Trussian Museum was, was put together and uh, with marvelous pieces like, like the Marte di Todi and all the excavations uh, uh, held uh, by, by the pontiff of that time in, uh, in the era of Vulci and, uh, and all, with all the incredible uh, decoration of the Regolini Galassi tomb and other. Uh, but also the Gregoriano Profano was established uh, um, by, by Gregorio XVI uh, before in uh, in the Vatican Lateran in the Lateran uh, Palace, and then uh, in 1970s, uh, the Gregoriano Profano and the Pio Cristiano other museum were moved uh, to the new wing that uh, Pope uh, Paul VI wanted to add to to the museum, together with uh, the contemporary art section that was. Uh, uh, decided and wanted, uh, strongly wanted by, by this incredible Milanese, very sophisticated Pope, uh, like it was Paul VI, uh, that uh, together with the Cardinal Lamacchi put together an uh, incredible collection of, of sacred contemporary art uh, um, museum. This is a Van Gogh that, uh, Pietà of Van Gogh, that looked and copied a uh, Delacroix painting. That uh, uh, We have a, a room devoted to Matisse, uh, we have, uh, no, this is the Ethnological Museum, but we also uh, in recent time established uh, 
a, a room devoted to Studio Azzurro in um, uh, the museum's participate to the Biennale in, nine, in uh, 2013 and 2015, uh, Biennale Arte Visive. In 2013, the Studio Azzurro uh, installation, video installation was there, and now we, we, we a year ago, we put it in into the Vatican Museum collections. But I, I can keep going uh, with the ethnological and wonderful collection of 80,000 pieces uh, coming, coming from the fourth continent. Uh, can you imagine 80,000 people? pieces, uh, artifacts, uh, that uh, were sent to Pope Pius XI uh, in 1925 for the missionary exhibition. And, uh, and after a year of the exhibition, Pope uh, Pius XI decided to have a permanent uh, uh, collection, a permanent museum devoted to the different civilizations, so the different culture. And this is um, a museum that uh, exactly Pope Francis is very, is very devoted to, of the idea of uh, making bridges to different, uh, to different uh, civilizations, to different uh, expression of, uh, of a form of art. Uh, this is uh, another incredible. But um, only briefly finish the historical part of the Vatican Museum. Uh, everything changes after 1929 when Pius XI, with the Treaty of Lateran, established the Vatican City State. Uh, the day, uh, the weeks before the, 19, the, the signing of the, the Lateran Treaty, uh, Pius XI was already. Uh, well organized. He asked uh, Giuseppe Moma, very well known. Uh, um, architect uh, from Piemonte, from Turin, uh, not Luca Beltrami that uh, uh, built for him only the Pinacoteca because Beltrami was already was a Milanese like like Pius XI was very was very old and so the only the Pinacoteca building was uh, was uh, built by him. But the rest of the Vatican City State, uh, apart from the Renaissance time, apart from the Baroque Bernini side, I must say that the Vatican City State is 1930s because uh, Momo uh, and Pius XI had the opportunity and the money after 70 years of uh, uh, Legge delle Guarantigie and they never, uh, the popes never took the money from the Italian government because they, were, they considered themselves uh, close in the Vatican and with no relation with the Italian government. Uh, when, when popes were elected, they were not even um, were out of the balcony of, of, uh, of, uh, of St. Peter's Square during that 70 years. And so mm, one of the first things uh, that Pius XI, uh, Pius XI did just after the Lateran Treaty is to open the Vatican Museum to the general public. He asked Giuseppe Momo to uh, built uh, um, and open a door in the uh, in the Vatican walls, in the Sangalesque walls of the Vatican, and you see you have Vat Musei Vaticani and uh, the coat of arms of Pius XI and the two images of Michelangelo and Raphael, that of course were the, the leaders and the stars of of, uh, of the Vatican <coughs> museums. Um, he, he also uh, built the wonderful staircase uh, system that uh, is took by, by probably the Posse San Patrizio in, Ur in, in Orvieto, but then Frank Lloyd Wright uh, uh, thought about, uh, and, and we, are, we are aware that he saw it uh, for the Guggenheim Museum in, in, uh, in New York, that served for many, many years uh, up to the year 2000 as uh, entrance and exit. So, uh, one, one way was the entrance and the other one uh, was an exit. But it was a different museum. Uh, the numbers of, of the museums were, were totally different from today. So even in the 2000, uh, you, uh, you now I will give you some numbers of the Vatican Museums today. We have seven miles of, uh, of, uh, of museums. Uh, and uh, 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 incredible crowd that I receive every day the number of uh, the visitors. Uh, um, of course, the Uffizi maybe have the same uh, number, but today we had 27,000 people in a day. Uh, and the Holy Week, this is the Holy Week, uh, is, a, is a high high season. But we have ranges of uh, 30 Thirty thousand also each day. So in in the year two thousand, which were still much less people, they open a new a new entrance. This is a, a very very modern with the Vanji 
sculpture uh, put at the beginning, uh, at, the, at the entrance. Uh, and these are some numbers. Uh, last year we had m a little more than six million visitors. Uh, the range of the entire year is 21,000 uh, per day. Um, we have more than 200,000 works of art, uh, but only the 10% is on display. So that, that's why, uh, the, um, of course, the potential, uh, potential uh, uh, of the institution is uh, the 90% of, 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 uh, of the collection is in, in deposit, so uh, you can imagine. Uh, seven miles, seven kilometers is a little less than seven miles. Uh, around um, 100 cultural events every year. Uh, now we will go a little more in that. Uh, we, have a, we are a publishing house, uh, the Edizioni Musee Vaticane, like uh, the, the book uh, La Mia Idea dell'Arte is a co-edition with Mondadori, but we are a publishing house. Uh, more than 700 employees that we arrived in uh, more than a thousand, if we count the bookshop uh, people and, and the guides, only accredited guides to, to, to us. Uh, of course, any guides uh, of the now, now, nowadays of the entire uh, country, but uh, before only the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Laziali, Roma, Provincia guide could, uh, could work in the Vatican Museum, but only Ours are the ones, uh, we have 350 guards that, uh, guides that uh, are uh, called by us to, to make our, our tours. Uh, oh, sorry. We have stages, uh, 55 stag stagisti every year. Uh, we divide it into six months uh, time, uh, uh, and more or less there are 20, 25 um, uh, young, young students in the different field from, from the restoration labs to to the um, uh, to the press office or to to the secretary in certain term of uh, general term or to the uh, or to the administrative part we loan more than 750 uh, artworks every year for more or less 55 exhibits every year um, the director depends directly i depend directly to the cardinal president of the governorate of the Vatican City State, that is the third charge of the Vatican City State. So there is the Pope, the Secretary of State, and then the cardinal president. So the link uh, is very direct to, to there is, um, uh, uh, the director has two deputy. One deputy is for the scientific and, and laboratory area, and another one is for the management area. Uh, and they are all helped by a general secretary that uh, is coordinating the management of the directorship. Uh, there are departments, laboratories, and services. Uh, the departments are 14, so the Vatican museums, in, in fact, are 14 different museums, uh, going very quickly. Egyptian, Etruscan, Greeks, and Romans antiquity, Christian antiquities, medieval art, Renaissance art, 17th and 18th century art, 19th century and contemporary art, tapestry and fabrics, decorative arts, historical collection and popular carriages, ethnological museum, and architectural superintendence. These are the, the 13 curators with whom I, I deal uh, every day. Uh, what uh, takes uh, almost unique the Vatican museums are the Vatican uh, Museum's Laboratory of Conservation and, and Restoration. We have seven different uh, uh, kinds of laboratory that were conceived in the 1930s, uh, even before the 1930s, but were established with a building um, built by Beltrami below the Pinacoteca Vaticana with a very wide and well-organized laboratory with light and, and hair and, uh, and space. One devoted to paintings and wood materials, and only for that people, for that kind of uh, of a restoration lab, we have 26 people working in as a permanent uh, staff. Uh, metals and ceramics are nine. Stones, materials, so all the antiquities, but also the, the modern stones, materials are 12. Mosaics are three people. Tissue and tapestry are 10. Paper are three. Uh, Polymeteric are 10. And then we have a conservative office that deals with the maintenance of the entire uh, 
the entire museum. Of course, uh, having uh, 21,000, uh, a range of 21,000 media of 21,000 people, visit visitors per day, we need to have a very, very strong uh, maintenance, uh, uh, maintenance uh, um, uh, project, and uh, the Conservative Office is uh, is devoted to that and coordinates the work also of the restorers and coordinates the work of the maintenance staff, uh, which is apart from this uh, from uh, from these um, laboratories and there are ten people working uh, all year long to to that. Uh, to that um, purposes. And then what also uh, led uh, the, the Vatican Museum to be uh, uh, an interesting institution for research in terms of, uh, of restoration, but in terms of, uh, of, uh, of studies, um, is the Laboratory of Scientific Research, uh, the cabinet, which uh, helps not only the restorers to to make analysis uh, and to studies on the material on on uh, on uh, on many many different aspects of of research in terms of uh, of restoration, but also for for the general and uh, and uh, really I inherited from from director from Paolucci, but also from uh, directors uh, uh, that came before me a very well uh, well organized situation in the, in this term. So uh, I am a lucky person in this sense. Uh, we have a scientific services, uh, um, a general inventory, which, uh, uh, of course, the the inventory is uh, one of uh, uh, the strong, uh, strong importance uh, um, tradition of the Vatican itself and the Vatican tradition in a wide sense. And so we we are very uh, lucky because we have a good uh, system of inventory that nowadays, of course, is uh, is. Um, is a uh, is uh, digitized, but still we do uh, we we are now innovating very much, and we are now inventing with a GIS with a, uh, a system of geographic uh, um, uh, system. Also the the ambience, not only the hard work, so also the uh, the situation of the different and and everything. Uh, all, all the GIF system is uh, is online in our website. Uh, we have an historical archive where people can study and can come uh, and to to study uh, our our object. We have a library, of course. Every every big museum has to have a library, and we are now moving the library. Of course, I'm coming from a library background, so I devote a lot of efforts to have a larger library, maybe even open to to the public. Uh, in Rome, we we have the Erciana, uh, like the Le Kunst here in Florence, but. But the Arciana nowadays is is restricting their access, and the major uh, library of uh, art uh, in Rome, uh, Palazzo Venezia, is now closed. So that's a, a terrible story. So I'll try to 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 see uh, in the next future to open maybe the library to a wide public. Uh, our library that is now an internal library just devoted to our curators, assistants, and restorers and and staff people. And we have an incredible photo library, photo library which uh, which is uh, different to the one in the Vatican uh, Library collection, uh, is mostly devoted to hard work. Uh, the Fondo Motion is there, so also Rome is represented, but also, but mainly is the uh, art of, uh, of, uh, of uh, objects uh, and art of the museum and and so it's very very important for restoration today I was in the Borgia apartment we are still uh, restoring the last room of the Borgia apartment and uh, we decided to uh, uh, to remove um, uh, an, uh, um, 1970 um, uh, ritocco uh, uh, ritocco, see, si, uh, retouch, uh, because we have uh, from the photo library an image that showed us that below there was there was uh, there was the at least the sagoma, the the shape of uh, of uh, of the figure of uh, of the rhetorica, and and in fact uh, we we found below uh, a very very interesting uh, in part, and so this is thanks to to have all together and and well-organized. 
the management and the administrative services are <laughs> 19 or more. And of course, in the last uh, 20 years, and, and I must say thanks to Paolucci and to the uh, delegate for the administrative part that is a, is a priest, uh, Monsignor Paolo Nicolini, they work together very strongly in put up together what a major museum can have. So not only the personal, the custody, uh, the promoting and development, the image and rights office, the relation with the public, events office, exhibition office, press office, web and multimedia office, technology and support office, publication, bookshop, technical support office, logistics and uh, contract uh, service office and patrons office and then uh, management office. So there are many, many offices that are more or less the one of the two lungs of, of the institution because of course it is as important as, as the, um, as the um, uh, all the departments and the laboratory part. Uh, we, I was very lucky because uh, when I arrived in, in June 2016, um, they were just uh, working on a new website. The old website was terrible. No, of course, it was, uh, was uh, 10 or 12 years old. Um, but of course, it was very modern for, for the time it was done. And uh, when I arrived, uh, they, it was almost done. But I realized that the, the um, Catalogo delle Opere, so the... the, the um, a catalog of the objects online was not uh, conceived uh, in in the new website, so we we postponed for six months uh, the the um, the the, um, the issue of the of the new website. And uh, with the with the inventory and with the curators, we worked strongly to have all the on display art objects online. And, and nowadays we have that. And, uh, and this is something I like, uh, I, I do believe that is very important because as, a, as my background from the library, the library system is very much, uh, is very much uh, uh, digitized and organized in, in this term. The use of the catalog and is, is very important. I must say that this is not happening very much in the Italian general museums up to this time. Of course, this is not the case of, uh, of the US and, and other foreigners' museum, but still in Italy there is a... And so I thought it was important to give a sign. And uh, so uh, in January 2017, so when uh, I just arrived, we launched the, the new website. You are very welcome to go there. Uh, we have uh, an incre incredible um, numbers of conferences. Uh, Paolucci was a master of conference, uh, uh, so he, uh, but we are, I tried to promote specifically conferences re devoted and related with our collections uh, um, subjects. Uh, this is what we have done the last, uh, the last uh, year, um, some of, uh, of the conferences. Uh, you saw the, na the numbers of the exhibitions. Some of the exhibitions are internal exhibition. Um, um, during my directorship, we established uh, the museum at work. The, the room 17 of the painting gallery is devoted to tiny and specific uh, little exhibit devoted to the major restoration or major acquisition or a little exhibition devoted to uh, to um, conference that we're making. Last December we had uh, a conference of Borromini and uh, we exposed uh, 20 drawings by Borromini coming from the Vatican Library that were f 50 years that were not on, on, on exhibit. And so it's, it's a place, a tiny place where to show and when to, to, to show visitors and scholar uh, scholars, the, the activity, the different kind of activity that are going on in the museum. Then we have some exhibition like the one, the Madonna uh, is, a, is a, um, uh, an exhibition devoted to, to the collection of our painting gallery only of the, uh, to the Virgin Mary that we had in occasion of, uh, of the trip of Pope Francis uh, to Fatima last May and we had this exhibit in Lisbon in the Museo Nazionale dell'Arte Antica in Lisbon. And then <coughs> last May also we had the Menorah, uh, is a very important uh, exhibit. Uh, um, the first time that uh, the Jewish community and the Christian community of Rome had 
uh, had together an exhibit devoted to the symbols of, of, of the Jewish uh, uh, culture and tradition and religion. Then uh, other, uh, other, other exhibit, one, one devoted to Korea and other. Ah, the, that one is very interesting. Uh, we have a, a wonderful tradition to have uh, students of the different academy working and, and design and drawing uh, dal vivo. Uh, our collections, and uh, uh, we had uh, uh, the Academia di Belle Arti working on the Gregoriano Profano last year, and uh, finally last November we decided to have the 20 of the best uh, students uh, to have exposed the drawings next to the original. So it, it was something that we started to do, and I would like to do uh, every year devoted to, to a, single, a single museum. Uh, events and presentations, uh, books events, uh, we, La Mia Idea di Arte, the video uh, that was made by, by <coughs> Tiziana Lupi and of, of the book of Papa Francesco, or uh, conferences like the, um, the Egyptian Conference Vatican Coffin Project, or uh, the Sky col collaboration with, um, uh, on, on Raphael, several, several, uh, we offered different kind of, of visits. Uh, uh, from, uh, from April of last year, Pope Francis uh, decided, uh, even before, but from April of uh, 2017, is established that as museum we are uh, in charge of, uh, of the visitors of the Castel Gandolfo, which is another directorship, but they are not used to have uh, Visitors, so we are helping the director of Casal Gandolfo to receive more and more visitors. Now we are, we are um, uh, from uh, from April. We will open also on Sunday, which is something very very unusual because uh, normally we are closed on Sunday. But uh, Casal Gandolfo is very difficult to reach during the normal days, and and is a place where you go on on Sundays. And so we 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 obtain to to be to be open on, on Sunday, at least in the spring and, and fall time. Uh, then we have special visits for non-blind non, non people or, or uh, special, uh, special openings in, uh, in, um, in Friday evenings from, uh, from, uh, from the spring to the late fall. Uh, uh, Friday evenings, which uh, which is a wonderful way to see the museums and to try to open the museums even to the citizen of, of the city, because of course during a normal day or a normal time of the museum, the museum is open many many hours, but still are working hours. Uh, in in uh, in the Friday evenings opening, we are open, but uh, in a normal price. Uh, sometimes we open in the evenings, but of course these are are exceptional and. Uh, and uh, private visits, because of course we have to deal with the guards and, and all the dealing with the, with the extra openings. And then we have a different, different uh, kind of uh, other activities. Uh, only uh, two weeks ago we, we launched together with a private company a new, a new um, uh, show uh, on, on The Last Judgment. Uh, of course it doesn't substitute the visit to, to, to the Sistine Chapel, but it's something that uh, in the idea of uh, uh, linking tradition to innovation, I do think that is something that uh, also Vatican Museums have to do. We have not to be close to only to, to of course, we, we are a publishing office, we, are, we promote studies and we, we will, uh, now uh, there is no other image here, we, we do promote uh, uh, for example, for the Easter time, a wonderful Algardi Christ uh, that was not on this place since, uh, since several years. Uh, and uh, we will probably have a conference on, on that. But at the meantime, um, uh, I think it is important to be open also to those kinds of, uh, of events or those kinds of... Uh, even, if, of course, we are not uh, show people, we just gave our images and uh, uh, scientific... Uh, uh, consulants to, to them. And then, of course, we, we are publishing in the Giovedi de Musei. Every Thursday afternoons, we are, uh, uh, not almost every, probably twice, uh, twice a week, uh, twice uh, to, to Thursday afternoon per week, uh, per, sorry, per, per month, we are hosting different subjects uh, uh, 
so that we can uh, let people uh, and uh, the community, but also normal people, to be aware what what is doing the museum. Uh, what else? This is a, a, a sample just to to let uh, to let you know uh, how the the maintenance is done every every day. It starts in January to. Uh, in the Sistine Chapel, so every evening they go up with an with a incredible machine up to the Sistine ceiling and, and clean and, and de-dust the Sistine ceiling. But of course they have to do it also in the Lacon and the entire museum in the whole year is, uh, is preserved. Um, but uh, the other big issue for my future is this one. The large numbers of visitors uh, uh, the Uffizi I see here, the director of the Uffizi that has the same problem as I am. And uh, it's really, um, of course, a any director would like to have a lot of visitors, but uh, on, on the same side, uh, on, the sa on, the, on the contrary, is the problem of uh, any, any director. So uh, my goal for the future is to deal with this uh, line. Thank you. Any question? Um, I'll, I'll ask you in English and sure. maybe I'll turn that. Yeah, so of course, um, a lot of our students might be interested to ask you for a young person, right? I mean, the idea of the Vaticans. Uh, what would you suggest? It's a kind of very simple question, right? But if you had to go to, for the first time to the Vaticans, and uh, you had to direct a young student. Mm. Um, it's a universal survey museum, uh, and it's so vast. But is there a way, a key in some way, that you would suggest to take for your first visit? How would you get into the museum and get out even you know, in, in three hours? First of all, I would uh, tell uh, the students to come early in the morning <laughs> because from from 11 12 o'clock until uh, 3 o'clock p.m. is a crazy time every time of the year every 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 month of the year so i would suggest yes to come or uh, at 3 o'clock but at 3 o'clock uh, then uh, then you, or you have only 3 hours uh, which which is fine but still you can have uh, a lot of people around so early in the morning and then maybe devote it and come, come more time. Of course, I, it's, I, I know that it's difficult to, to do it, but maybe devoted to classicals the first time and then to Renaissance frescoes. And, and uh, so, so try to, to separate the, the, the different, at least the different major, major section of the museum. Because otherwise, is uh, it's, 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 it's beautiful, but it's uh, really too much. Hello, my name's Morgan. Um, so in the US, we have a pretty big problem, especially in public schools, of less and less emphasis being put on the arts as something that you learn and something that is part of your life. So I'm not sure how much of a problem it is in Italy, but I was just wondering if you have any plans on how you can inspire the next generation to kind of explore the arts more. We, we have a, um, one of the, of, uh, of the offices is devoted to educational, uh, is an educational office. Of course, we, we have a, a, a strong project with, uh, with Italian, mostly with Italian Italian schools that are coming to visit us. Uh, there is a special, very low price to, to get them be, be there. Uh, I, l a month ago, the director of the Louvre came to visit me and I realized that, um, that the Louvre uh, is free for, for any kinds of students up to the age of 24, uh, 21, but the very difficult, different things to, to understand that is that uh, most of the Italian museums and uh, the Louvre are paid by the state. We are paying the state, <laughs> our state, little and tiny state. So it is, um, 
uh, is, is, and of course, uh, to, to have uh, and to maintain the museum, we, we really need to, to charge even a, a small amount to, to students. And uh, of course, uh, pilgrims also have a special, a special um, rate. Uh, I'm trying and I'm thinking to have maybe maybe a special a special uh, for university st uh, students. Of course, if students are coming only to to have speci specific lesson, they are not paying if the professor is, uh, and they and they can come and study and they uh, can have lectures uh, there. And sometimes they're also asking for our conference hall to to have uh, some lessons. Um, we have a lot of uh, uh, relationship with uh, with the Italian university, but also with the U.S. and foreign uh, university, French, Belgium, and and other European universities that have uh, facilities and, and locations and, and places in Rome. So we have, and of course with um, with the um, academies uh, in uh, in Rome, uh, the American Academy, the British Academy, and. Uh, and many, many uh, other academies that are in Rome, and we we share projects together with the British School at Rome. We have a, an archaeological project, uh, so um, there are many, many, uh, many projects related to the educational. Uh, what uh, what uh, we have done in the last uh, few months, uh, um, I ask all the um, uh, the curators to every Tuesday afternoon to give to our guide uh, tours, uh, guides, uh, internal guides that are 300 uh, and a little more, to, to um, make a, some conference that uh, renew them what we are going to do, what our, our, our update projects, so that the, even in the explication, because of course our guides will take, the students will take uh, the different levels of students that will arrive, they are aware of how is going the museum, what are the projects going on. Ah, I forgot to, to mention the major restoration projects, of course we have uh, uh, at least four major projects uh, going on, the courtyard of, of the Pigna, we just finished one, the, the, the Nicione uh, side. We are we are restoration uh, restoring the Sala di Costantino, the Giulio Romano and Raphael pupils, uh, fourth room um, of the Raphael Stanze, and we are finishing the apartment of Borgia by Pinturicchio, and then we are working on the Scala Santa in San John Lateran, where all the uh, Pittori Sistini, so the Sisters of Fifth the painters, are uh, depicted. The, this Holy Stairs, which is uh, one of the uh, pilgrimage uh, places uh, that visitors uh, of uh, of Italy. What what is important to remember is that the Vatican museums are in charge also of the art of the major basilicas. So we have the Sovrintendenza. Even yes, it's a huge, <laughs> it's a huge uh, task. So we we are. Uh, consultant and and we do m make restoration in the in also in the majors basilica so St John Lateran St Mary Majors uh, St uh, St Paul's outside the wall and St Peter's and uh, re very recently and we had the chance to meet Pope Francis for that occasion we restore I I didn't thought to bring the image the Salus Popoli Romani one of the most uh, important icon, medieval icon uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Rome uh, is the Virgin, uh, uh, is preserved in the Cappella Borghese of St. Mary Major and uh, Pope Francis is specifically devoted to this image and because he goes there every time he, 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 he goes to a trip and he, uh, he comes back and before going to the Vatican he passed in St. Mary Major just to pray on, on this image and it's a very important image. I'm Roman, and, and I know how how we, as a Roman, we are devoted to, to this image. And and restoring it was really, in the last year, was very impressive because we clean it, and it, it was an incredible, I did, I'm sorry, I didn't thought to, to bring an image. And uh, and it was a wonderful, wonderful occasion to work on one of the major icon uh, uh, iconography of medieval, Medieval time, and of course, all the scientific cabinet supported us in terms of uh, of all analysis to 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 be done before before the cleaning and uh, and the restoration. Do you have gifts? Do you have uh, art donations from uh, 
Italians from uh, other parts of the world, and how you choose the contemporary things. Do you choose the donations because uh, have the religion subjects or they have to do with the, with the develop development of the daily life uh, of today's day? Uh, we, of course, we do increase the collections, uh, uh, not only the contemporary art section, but uh, all the different collections. Last year we bought uh, a lunette by Vasari uh, on, uh, on, uh, on an auction sale that was on, uh, uh, before, was, uh, was uh, painted by Vasari in Florence, sent it to, to the Popal Palaces, uh, it was painted on wood. And, and so it was put uh, in the lunette, uh, but it was uh, on wood. Uh, so when uh, Napoleon time, it, they took it away, and we, we bought only the two fragments. The San Lorenzo in the middle uh, uh, was not there, and in fact there, there are representation of four uh, hereticus. Uh, but I, I thought it was interesting anyhow to, to, to buy it. And, uh, and of course, we uh, we do receive uh, a lot. Uh, we recently, we received uh, very important fabrics uh, from Mexico, from uh, uh, 17th century Mexican uh, fabrics. Uh, generally, the the mm, of course is not is not uh, so strict. But the idea is uh, they have to be religious themes. This is would be would be preferable. And uh, we have some patrons that are offering us uh, or trying to, to offer things uh, and we happen very often. What I must tell you by, m by being director is almost every week I do receive a, uh, a letter from, a, from an artist that would like to donate his, <laughs> his art to us uh, and, and fortunately we have the policy that we cannot accept and cannot expose or they want to donate the, the art uh, just to have an exhibition in the, in the Vatican Museum. And so we, mm, uh, but we have this policy that we cannot expose thing, uh, art uh, of living, living uh, people, artists. Excuse me, <coughs> sorry for my lack of voice. Do you have any projects for the Piranesi Centenary of 2020? See, 2020 is the Anno Sanzio, like we, um, with analogism, we renamed the, that, uh, uh, see, not Anno Santo, but Anno Sanzio. Uh, so we are, uh, we are uh, strongly working on, on the celebration of uh, Raphael in 2020, but also I do believe as a graphic art, he, he's starting to organize a, a Piranesi show, possibly with a, the collaboration of the Institute, National Institute of Graphic Art and the Vatican Library, which uh, have m probably the, the most important collection in terms of uh, copper plates and uh, ancient, ancient different collection of, of prints by Piranesi. Uh, my, question, my question is about uh, how, like on what level do you think the nowadays exhibitions in the Vatican museums are related to religion. Sorry, no, I didn't understand. Uh, how much the exhibitions nowadays in the Vatican museums are related to religion? Of course, the, um, we we are mostly of our exhibition are related to to religion, but some of them are also scholarly uh, exhibitions. So we are try to. To, to do the two things at the same time. Um, the, um, I can show you the... Um, uh, the menorah, of course, is devoted to the religion, the Madonna, of course. Uh, this one is um, a Paleo-Christian uh, exhibit that we have done uh, last March uh, on... Uh, on um, is also religion. Francesco Borromini, no, is a, is a scholarly exhibit. Uh, the one of Korean, no, is, a, is a, of course an a, um, attestation of a Korean, uh, Korean um, uh, Catholicism in, uh, in that country for, for several, several centuries. Uh, the one, oh, sorry, El Mito de Roma is an exhibition that we just finished in Santiago del Chile. It is a totally exhibition devoted to Rome. 
Uh, so it's not religion. It's, uh, it's the idea of uh, uh, representing the um, Rome from uh, from uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of, of Rome to the uh, late Empire of Rome. And uh, we have tried to do the exhibition only with deposits, art objects, and sculptures. And it was an incredible uh, and fantastic uh, success in Santiago del Chile, in Palazzo de la Moneda. So it's the presidential uh, palace of Santiago del Chile. Uh, I have one more question. Sí. So I know there are many people from uh, different countries in the world to visit the Vatican Museum, a Catholic background. How are you uh, going to put them into the context of the religions or uh, this Italian or Western cultural context? Um, we are doing that with uh, uh, our audio guides, if you don't want to have a personal guide, uh, but our guides, uh, uh, hopefully, and we are training <laughs> the guides for this purpose, just to explain visitors of different faith, of different culture, to be aware of what our, are our symbols and what are our uh, iconography, more, more common iconography related to our, our religion. And I, I do believe, of course, it's not happening to to the wide uh, visitor, wide uh, numbers of visitors, but uh, m m some of the visitors, like we do when we, we travel and we go to different different cultures, uh, museums or sites, we are tr learning ourselves of what <laughs> what we are going to see, and we try to to be in uh, in the culture we are visiting. consideration of course we do of course we do the menorah was uh, of course now i'm very well aware of the different uh, declination of the sim symbol of the menorah but of course it's not something that is so common uh, even uh, even to a christian uh, of course uh, there is for for a jew um, public but for even for a christian public it's not so common and uh, can you believe for other religion or other um, uh, cultures and so in for the menorah we explain very well in with didactical panels what what the menorah and the different meanings of the menorah was it seemed you mentioned you have student interns that work at the museum <laughs> Uh, we try not to take students, uh, uh, it's uh, postgraduate students, or at least students that have uh, already have a certain uh, background. How many people apply, and are they from all over <laughs> the world, and how are they chosen? Uh, there is a commission. I'm not part of the commission. <laughs> I, I do receive the list, and I, I see if uh, I agree with the, with the, with the decision of, of uh, the four people of the commission. A lot of people applied, and we take more or less 22 to 25 every six months. Um, for example, uh, cataloging and translating with an app uh, into, into several languages the Latin inscriptions that are there. So with an app you can uh, put, and, and these uh, uh, is what uh, the two, the two uh, students of, uh, of the last six months I, wor I worked on, but only half of that was done because there are uh, six, uh, six, uh, mil uh, six mm, uh, thousand and, uh, and I don't know how many, I, I, I mentioned the number. Hi, um, I was wondering what advice you would give current students who are looking to have a career in the museum world? So, sorry, no, I, I, I didn't hear. Can you, can you talk closer? Oh, sorry. Um, I wanted to know what you advice you would give to current students who are looking to have a career in the museum world. Uh, it's, it's funny because my personal experience, I explained a little, I never thought to, to, to um, that I ha would have worked in a museum. <laughs> I'm a little an uh, anomalous as a, as a, as a career. Uh, uh, passion. Uh, I um, to like what you you do and and do it with passion. That's and and never and never stop. I had three children and and while I having my children, 
I I was always waking up very early in the morning to to write and to study, uh, and try not to take of time uh, and so you have even not to be lazy <laughs> um, so with the theme of tradition and innovation that we've been talking about a lot of museums are starting to incorporate technology into their exhibits like having screens that show details of the artwork is the Vatican planning on adding any technology or innovations like that, or are you planning on staying very traditional? <laughs> no, absolutely. We we have, uh, if you come and see, for example, it's not our project directly, our project, but if you come and see the technology used in the in the last judgment show, live show that is now in Via della Conciliazione, you can have a, an essay of what uh, is our innovation. And then even in the Menora exhibit, there was a part devoted to, of course, uh, to the technology. And uh, and if you have a look to our website, you can immediately realize that uh, uh, the GIS, or the, the geographic uh, uh, system that we are, are, are working on and, and the video related to, to that project uh, are online in our website and it's something very, very technology. And, and so we we are we are working on that. Uh, aspetta, aspetta, aspetta. No, no, no. Ci sono altre due domande. Sorry, uh, sorry to prolong the discussion, but you touched on this already. But to the extent that you can uh, clarify, what, what are the overall policies and processes that you are? Uh, using for acquiring uh, new work and are you in general looking for specific things as to when they come to the market or do you actively seek uh, pieces that are in private collections and so forth and they may complement what you have? Um, I'm, um, of course uh, every, every person, uh, every um, director has a background and so probably his, uh, his background, you, you take your background and your way to be in, in what you are doing. And so I'm, um, I'm a print person, but of course I wouldn't, I wouldn't have quite prints, even though we have a, a print contemporary uh, print uh, collection that we probably will expose in the, in the near future. But um, I do like very much uh, landscapes and vedutismo, which was one of my subjects in the past. And so I, um, I realized that uh, in terms of uh, vedutisti, the painting collection of the Vatican Museum is not so, so well uh, equipped. So maybe, maybe in the future I would uh, buy, if I can, on the market some uh, vedutisti. And then the contemporary art, of course. And then there are several other, for example, uh, I, uh, s some, of, some of the, um, things are proposed uh, they are coming to propose us uh, recently i would like to buy a baroque painting but the state italian state uh, notificated stopped it and and we are we are fo a foreign museum so we cannot acquire it so i'll try if i can really really it's true and so uh, it was a it was a perfect painting for our collections is a uh, 17th century painting of a private collector in Genoa, and I, we are still trying to buy it, but we'll see. Okay, so thank you. I would like to, you know, everybody thank oh. Barbara. <laughs> <laughs>